true dragons can be big, small, ascending, and hidden. Large clouds and mist rise, while small ones conceal themselves. And the exquisite ones, anyone who gains them, can conquer all corners of the world and surpass the heroes of the world. I will be the one to crack the Zhenlong chess game this time. This unparalleled power and unparalleled fortune will not fall on the ugly monk who has invincible power but cannot even protect his elder brother this time. I will rewrite the fate of everyone in Tianlong this time. I, Zhao Mu, will not let my like-minded brother end up in disgrace and commit suicide to thank the world for its fate. Obtaining the martial arts and qi of Su Zhu. Rewriting the meaning of the heavenly dragon is difficult to calm, keywords of the novel. Crossing the heavenly dragon. Starting from the Zhenlong chess game without pop-ups, crossing the heavenly dragon. Starting from the Zhenlong chess game. Download the complete TXT collection, crossing the heavenly dragon. Starting from the Zhenlong chess game. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Tian Def Di Agu You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1. Tian Def Di Agu Heavenly Deaf and Mute Valley. Finally found it. A young man aged 17 or 18 looked at the name on the Guku stone tablet and exclaimed excitedly. The young man dusted off the dust on his body and held a somewhat tattered oil paper umbrella with his arm. Looking at the statues on both sides of the valley, one stone man covers his mouth and the other covers his ears. This place is undoubtedly a deaf and mute valley. This time, he traveled alone through mountains and rivers to inherit the precious and exquisite chess game of this place. When he continued to move forward to the valley mouth, a person stopped him. The young man looked at the person who was blocking him. This person is around 40 years old and is a beautiful middle. Aged woman. When she appeared, waves of floral fragrance rushed in, refreshing the heart. The woman stopped at the entrance of the valley and said, What kind of person are you? Why did you trespass into the deaf and mute valley? The young man didn't hide it, but spoke frankly, I am Zhao Mu, a native of the Daizhou prefecture on Hadong Road. I have been fond of Go since childhood, and I heard that Mr. Su Xingha, a clever debater, is a master of the game. He has set up a Zhenlong chess game here, which has been unbeatable for decades. I am also someone who loves chess, so I came to take a look. Upon hearing the background of the young man in front of her, the woman's attitude softened a bit and she said, it turns out that the young master of Daizhou Prefecture came all the way from the border of Song and Liao. Zhao Mu arched his hand and said, exactly. It's been a long journey here, and the road has been very difficult. Could you please make it convenient for me, madam, so that I can see this legendary chess game? The woman looked up and down at Zhao Mu. Although his appearance was not as handsome as his master had requested, he could still be considered handsome. It actually meets the requirements for breaking the chess game. The woman carefully examined, and although she was dressed in shabby clothes, she saw that there was a noble aura between her eyebrows, indicating that she was a noble son from a noble family. Afterwards, he nodded in satisfaction. This woman's eyesight is really good. Because Zhao Mu is such a person. He carries a noble aura because he is the fourth son of Emperor Taizu Zhao Kuanyin and a descendant of the eight sages King Zhao Defang. The true legacy of Taizu. But now Zhao Mu is not the original Zhao Mu, he is a traveler. In this era where even drinking cold water can cross, he also crossed it due to certain, special, reasons. As a traveler, he came to this era as a lucky and unfortunate person. Fortunately, at the beginning, they held the status of imperial relatives and nobles. Although he was not favored by his brothers because he was an illegitimate son, his father's title as a county prince did not hold any other position, and he was not able to obtain the county duke's title of demotion and succession. But in the end, he still managed to catch a marquee from the border. His title is Daiho and his fiefdom is located in Daizhou Daixian near Yenmen Pass. Although not as good as the children of other royal families in the capital, who knew and his maids, flying eagles and running dogs, sound and lust like dogs and horses. 
but three or five servants, a small mansion. It's also stronger than many people in this world. When he first arrived, he learned about his own era in his father's Dongping County Prince's mansion. Now is the time of Emperor Zhezong of Song, who understood history, and this is already the last afterglow of the Northern Song dynasty. Because the next emperor after Emperor Zhezong was Emperor Huizong. The wheels of history have rolled towards him. The Northern Song dynasty had already begun its sunset, and more than twenty years later, it would be an eternal mark of shame, the shame of Jing Kong. Although he had a heart to save the country and prevent this disaster from happening before. But as a marginalized collateral royal family, he can't speak much even with a small voice. And he was also pushed to the border by his brothers, far from the capital, and couldn't say a word. Although he could have crossed south in advance, avoiding becoming a fish and meat for the golden man. But the rivers and mountains fell, and the royal family was humiliated, which was also something he didn't want to see. But the most important thing is emotion. He often thinks, why don't he have any system cheats when he's also a time traveler? It's not important without these, what's important is that he is still an ordinary person with an average level of education and abilities. Unless God gives him a big pie, otherwise he really doesn't know how to make a living in this upcoming chaotic world. It wasn't until I arrived at the fiefdom and went to play outside the Yenmen Pass in my spare time that everything turned around. Because he discovered some interesting Liao script on the stone wall outside Yenmen Pass. After exploring the Liao language, he found someone to translate it and discovered some interesting things. Xiao Yu and Shan's masterpiece. At this point, he realized that the world he had traveled to was not the historical period of the Northern Song dynasty. But rather the parallel world in the novel Tianlong Babu. Afterwards, he used his aristocratic identity to meet and support some rangers, and inquired about the current situation in the martial arts world. The answer he received was. Nan Murong and Bei Xiaofeng are two equally famous heroes today. Xiao Feng took over as the leader of the beggars sect only a few years ago, and then achieved the illustrious reputation of chivalry. Zhao Mu was overjoyed by this answer. He used to enjoy reading novels very much, and the novel Tianlong Babu is even more familiar to him. He knew that if calculated according to this timeline, Xiao Feng had not yet been expelled from the beggars sect, and the Zhenlong chess game of Tian Def Di Yagu had not been broken by the virtual bamboo. And he can break through the Zhenlong chess game in advance and accept the inheritance of Wuyazi in advance. As long as he seizes the luck of the virtual bamboo, obtains the hundred-year skill of the three elders of Xiaoyao, and gathers the thirty-six holes of the Lingjiao Palace and the unique figures of the seventy-two islands in the martial arts world to rewrite the fate of many heroes, including Xiao Feng, it may not be impossible to turn the tide and avoid the tragedy of the shame of Jing Kong. The most important thing is that the unparalleled beauties in the heavenly dragon world are waiting for him to pick at will. As a lecherous person, he naturally won't miss this blessed opportunity. Knowing the way to turn the world around, he closed his door to study chess with the help of his mother. Although they may not be considered the top players nowadays, breaking through the Zhenlong game is enough. The most important aspect of Zhenlong's chess game is the survival of the opponent, rather than testing the player's chess skills. After making sufficient preparations, Zhao Mu traveled a thousand miles from his fiefdom to the mute valley of the heavenly death to break through the Zhenlong chess game ahead of time. Obtain the power that is enough to turn the world around. Although the woman hesitated a lot in her heart, she looked at Zhao Mu's sincerity in coming from afar to play a game of chess, which moved her heart a bit. After careful consideration, the woman said, Well then. Although it's not yet the day set by the master to break the game, there's no one in the valley right now, and it's not easy to see you come all the way. Moreover, your appearance is beautiful and your demeanor is excellent. Although it's not top.notch, it's not bad either. It also meets the conditions for breaking the game. Come with me to see the master. See if the master gives you this opportunity. Upon hearing the woman's agreement, Zhao Mu arched his hand and said, Thank you very much, madam. 
However, Madam just called Mr. Tsongbian, Master. Although the young man is not involved in the martial arts world, he has also heard about it. It is rumored that Mr. Tsongbian has eight disciples under Su Xingha's sect and is known as the Eight Friends of the Han Valley. Do you not know that Madam is one of them? The woman replied, the little woman's name is Shi Qinglu. Her master has seven disciples. It's not easy to come from afar, so I'll give you a chance. However, whether or not I'll give you a chance to enter the game depends on my master's mood. Then Shi Qinglu slowly led Zhao Mu into the valley. Although the valley was desolate, it was still clean. Zhao Mu followed behind Shi Qinglu, looking around. Then the two stopped outside a cave. At this moment, Shi Qinglu turned to Zhao Mu and said, Please wait here. I will go and invite Master to come out. Zhao Mu nodded, and Shi Qinglu immediately went into the cave to invite Su Xingha. And Zhao Mu was not idle at this moment, he was attracted by the chess game on the nearby stone table. New book release requires support, collection, votes, and follow. Up reading. The author is an old author in the martial arts district, and I cannot guarantee how well they write, but I don't think they are eunuchs. Please rest assured, readers. The author's promise has always been, as long as the contract is signed, it must be completed. Even if one reader continues to read, they will continue to write for the sole reader. Note. This fan is based on the widely circulated trilogy version, which is different from the newly revised version of interpersonal relationships. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Zhenlong Chess Game You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Zhenlong Chess Game This chessboard is square and has a very complex layout inside. Moreover, it is complex and difficult to distinguish. Based on Zhao Mu's learned normal chess skills, this game can be said to be an unsolvable one. White chess has reached the end of its time, and the dragon has been cut off by black chess. Now only the film is left to survive. According to the normal chess routine, even if this white player can walk more than 10 steps, it is just a trapped beast still fighting in vain. Now Heisey only needs to accept a few more single levels to end the entire chess game. No need to continue. If it were someone else, it would definitely be a matter of knowing the difficulty and retreating. Fortunately, Zhao Mu was aware of the causes and consequences, and knew the solution of putting a dead end to the future. After carefully examining the chess game, he locked his gaze on the Tian Yuan position. So he began to deduce in his mind, and after confirming everything was correct, he picked up the white paper and went down to the heavenly Yuan position. When this piece fell, it directly sealed off a large piece of his own chess. Although the chess path is different from that of the virtual bamboo, the principle is the same and the same. At this moment, Su Xingha walked out of the cave with a tired expression on his face. As I get older, I always feel a bit tired every day, although Su Xingha is a bit angry about Zhao Mu disturbing his lunch break. But I heard from my disciple that he came from a long distance from the border of Song and Liao, and I am still prepared to receive this sincere young man. Moreover, Wu Yazi once said that anyone in this chess game, as long as they are young and handsome young talents, can come here to break the game. Since the person has arrived, he should have received them. At this moment, as soon as he came out of the cave, he saw Zhao Mu's fallen son. A lingering shadow of Su Xingha swept past and approached the chessboard. He then lightly stroked his beard and lowered his head to look at the fallen pieces on the chessboard. Su Xingha was furious when he saw Zhao Mu's chess moves, and his white beard at the corner of his mouth was constantly twitching. He spoke up directly and said, Do you know how to play chess? How could anyone, in a time of decline, even kill a large piece of chess pieces like Sishianyuan? Upon hearing Su Xingha speak, Zhao Mu was immediately startled. He doesn't know when Su Xingha arrived in front of him. Zhao Mu only knows a few martial arts techniques to strengthen his body, so he naturally cannot discover them. Zhao Mu saw the enraged Su Xingha and jokingly asked, Mr. Tsongbian, there are rumors in the martial arts world that you are not deaf and mute. How did you speak? 
Originally, Su Xinghe was very angry because he didn't rest well during his lunch break and Zhao Mu didn't follow the usual chess routine. But after hearing Zhao Mu's joke, it was also a bit awkward. He coughed lightly twice, his anger reduced by three points, and then said awkwardly, ahem. If you desecrate the master's chess game like this, even the deaf and mute will be angry and unable to speak. At this moment, Xu Qinglu ran over from the side and said, Master, don't get angry. I'll just send this person away. At this moment, Su Xingha stretched out his wrinkled and somewhat bony arm, gently swayed it, and then said, No need. Your master has said that any young and talented person with a handsome appearance can come here to break the game. Although this kid's chess path is unimaginable at the moment, he has already settled down. According to our rules, he has already entered the game. So I will deal with him a little. Speaking, Su Xingha glared at Zhao Mu, snorted coldly, and then raised his hand with deep internal strength to absorb and restrain all the chess pieces that Zhao Mu had sealed himself. The pieces fell into the white chess box in a proper manner. Then, with a flick of his wrist, he used his internal strength to suck out a black spot from the box and continued the unfinished battle on the chessboard. Although Zhao Mu knew he was in the world of martial arts, he was still surprised by Su Xinghe's ability to retrieve and move objects from the air. At present, the path of survival has opened up, and Zhao Mu's chess skills are already enough to break the game. After calming his mind, he took a deep breath and then exhaled it. After stabilizing his mind, even though Luo Zi became entangled with Su Xinghe. As Su Xinghe progressed along the chess path, his eyes filled with anger gradually became clear and bright. As the chess game continued to advance, not only did his anger disappear from his face, but he disregarded his mature and dignified image and grinned like a child, looking at Zhao Mu while smiling. On the contrary, Zhao Mu was somewhat underestimated. As the two continued to fight on the chessboard, in the 59th move, Zhao Mu once again placed the chess piece on the Tianyuan position. And with this one move, the entire dragon of white chess came to life in an instant, while black chess's dragon slaying sword had already been broken by white chess's remorseful momentum. The situation on the entire chessboard instantly reversed. Seeing the situation turn around, Su Xingha lowered his eyebrows, squinted his eyes, and studied the chess game in front of him. After a moment of contemplation, he put down the chess piece in his hand. At this moment, Su Xingha stood up and bowed to Zhao Mu with a deep bow. When Zhao Mu saw Su Xingha bowing, he quickly stood up and asked knowingly, What is this, Mr. Lao? Mr. Lao is an elder, and this gift is a way to celebrate the younger generation's birthday. Su Xingha arched his hand and smiled, Hee hee, I have been studying chess for half my life. I have never heard of this move before. It shows that I have extraordinary wisdom. I was reckless just now, and I hope you can forgive me. After speaking, Su Xingha gave another deep gift. But Su Xingha also had doubts in his heart. He had the best chess skills in his life, so he humbly asked, although this is an inexplicable act of self-destruction of the Great Wall on the Tianyuan Road, it has also brought a broader world to the young brother's white son. But how did the young brother come up with such a shocking move? Zhao Mu spread out his hand and said indifferently, since there is no way to heaven or earth, it would be better to give it a try and fight back. Su Xingha smiled happily at this moment and said, what a back dot to dot back battle. Good, good. As Su Xingha spoke, he took Zhao Mu's hand and came to a stone wall. He then pointed at the wall and said solemnly, little brother, please come in. Although Zhao Mu knew that this was a hiding place without a cliff, it was clearly a stone wall with no doors or windows. How did he get in? And he remembers that in the original story, it should have been three wooden houses. How did it become a stone wall to him? Is it difficult to say that the wooden house was built after Su Xingha? Did you come early on your own? Zhao Mu doesn't know about these anymore. But right now, Wiyazi is right behind the stone wall. With 70 years of skill, the opportunity to become rich overnight is right in front of me. 
but there is no way in, what should I do? Su Xingha saw the clues and said, I used to see my little brother's demeanor, and his tuna before settling down was also one with some martial arts skills. Why is he still standing still now? Zhao Mu replied, Senior, you have good eyesight, but what I have learned is only some basic martial arts to strengthen my body. Although Zhao Mu didn't know he was in the world of martial arts before, in ancient times he had neither a computer nor a phone, and time was very long. When he has nothing to do, he will practice Tai Chi, Tai Chi sword, and five animal play that he learned from the park master to strengthen his body and health. Su Xingha nodded and said, I see. Later, Su Xingha slapped Zhao Mu behind him, and Zhao Mu flew out directly, fiercely hitting the stone wall. Although it was a bit painful, it also pierced through the stone wall. Zhao Mu followed the stone steps and rolled down heavily. After landing, Zhao Mu found himself in an open cave. Although he fell hard, Su Xingha had previously used his internal strength to protect Zhao Mu. He only suffered some vibrations, but was not injured. At this moment, only an echo could be heard inside the cave. After so many years, finally someone has arrived. End of this chapter Chapter 3 No Cliff Test You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 No Cliff Test Although it is known that the person in the cave is without a cliff. But here it's dim, cold, and there's no sunlight at all. And in the distance, there were only leisurely candles, as if it were an ancient tomb of a royal tomb. Combined with the echo of the cliff, the current scene is somewhat eerie and eerie. Although Zhao Mu was aware of the previous situation, he couldn't help but shiver. At this moment, Wu Yazi's voice came again. The Zhenlong chess game set by me has been unsolvable for decades. I didn't expect someone to unravel it today. It was really fate. Those who are destined, come over quickly. Looking for the sound of no cliff, Zhao Mu slowly walked towards the depths of the cave. I saw a person sitting on top of the futon in the cave, and the dim light of the candle lit up his face. Wu Yazi has a three-foot-long beard, a face like a crown of jade, with no wrinkles on his face, and a head of green silk hanging on his shoulder. If you shave off this long beard, you will be like a young man in his twenties. Seeing this face, Zhao Mu was also somewhat surprised. Although I know that Wu Yazi in the book is a rare and beautiful man, from what I have seen with my own eyes, his appearance can definitely be called Pan An's appearance. No wonder Li Chioshui and Tian Shan Tong Lao have been jealous of him for so many years. And Wu Yazi was also carefully observing Zhao Mu. Wu Yazi sighed and said, Hey, although your appearance doesn't meet my expectations, it's still barely possible. Zhao Mu looked at Wu Yazi and said, I really can't match the appearance of my senior. Upon hearing Zhao Mukui praise himself, Wu Yazi also smiled and nodded. Then Wu Yazi asked, What's your name? Zhao Mu bowed his hand and politely replied, Junior Zhao Mu, pay respects to the senior. Wu Yazi saw a faint aura of luxury between his eyebrows and asked, Are you surnamed Zhao? Are you from the royal family? Zhao Mu no longer concealed it. He said, I am indeed a member of the Great Song family. Wu Yazi looked at him again and then said, Since you are a member of the royal family, why do you have a somewhat vulgar demeanor? In theory, even if your days are poor, it's not necessary for you to be like this, imperial relatives and nobles. Zhao Mu smiled and said, He he, I've made my senior laugh. I'm a commoner and was in theft in the border area of Song and Liao. The environment in the border area is harsh, so if you want to make a living, you naturally need to be more refined and refined. Wu Yazi nodded silently. After carefully examining it, Wu Yazi said, your appearance is barely acceptable. I have been waiting for decades, and I'm afraid I won't be able to wait for a few days. You broke my chess game and came here. I believe you are a wise and brave person, and you are so vulgar. I expect you to be able to handle things with ease by observing your words and expressions. 
At this moment, Zhao Mu asked himself a question that he had always been puzzled by. He asked, why has the senior been evaluating the appearance of the younger generation as soon as he entered the door? And when he just entered the valley, he also heard from senior Su Xingha and Lady Shi Qinglu, who guarded the valley, that the appearance of the younger generation barely passed the test. What exactly does this mean? This question is very puzzling for Zhao Mu, both in his past and present life. Now, while Wu Yazi is still alive, I will first ask the question I have always wanted to know. After saving a while, my master died, and this matter became a mystery again. Wu Yazi said, Kneel down and kowtow to me nine times, and I will tell you. But Zhao Mu remained unmoved at this moment. This is because he is different from Su Zhu. And he saw something strange in Wu Yazi's eyes. This may be a test. Su Zhu has an ugly appearance and looks very silly and honest. And it's dull and brainless. On the other hand, he is just the opposite, appearing too shrewd. In his previous life, he was a businessman, and although he was reincarnated and refurbished, he could still be seen as vulgar at a glance. Zhao Mu was afraid that if he appeared too eager, it would instead arouse Wu Yazi's suspicion. After all, Zhao Mu was not invited by Su Xingha at the invitation of Wu Yazi, but came by himself. I came here from a thousand miles just for a chess game. This person is either a chess enthusiast or has ulterior motives. This may raise doubts. Now that he is only one step away from the peak, he must take it step by step to be the most secure. Therefore, Zhao Mu deliberately said, the person this gentleman kneels to is nothing more than the heavenly and earth lord's personal teacher. And the younger generation is just because they love chess and know that there is a Zhenlong chess game here, so they came to take a look. After not wanting to unravel the chess game, he was slapped in by Senior Su Xingha. Although it was fortunate to see Senior Su, it was not appropriate to make him kneel and kowtow as soon as we met. Although the younger generation is a minor branch, they are also relatives of the royal family. Moreover, the man has gold under his knee and kowtows to the senior for no reason, which may be considered impolite. After listening to Zhao Mu's words, Wu Yazi burst into laughter. If Zhao Mu really kowtowed like this, Wu Yazi would have suspected that he was sent by Ding Chuanxiu or had some ulterior motives. Now that I see him refusing to kowtow, I feel a bit proud and appreciate him a little more. Zhao Mu ignored Wu Yazi's laughter and directly arched his hand, saying, Now that the chess game has been broken, I have fulfilled my wish to come here. It's time to rush back to the fiefdom. Goodbye, I. As Zhao Mu spoke, he was about to turn around and leave, but Wu Yazi saw this and used the northern underworld divine skill to suck him back. Zhao Mu, on the other hand, stumbled and pretended to be frightened, looking at him and saying, You. You. Are you a human or a ghost? What kind of magic was that just now? Wu Yazi smiled and said, Demonic method. He he, this is called biming divine skill. Zhao Mu pretended to be ignorant and murmured, the northern underworld divine skill. I only read the line, there are fish in the northern underworld, in Zhuangzi's leisurely journey, but I haven't heard of any northern underworld divine skill. Wu Yazi didn't answer Zhao Mu's question, so he turned to ask, Kid, you said you come from the border of Song and Liao, and your fiefdom must often be harassed by the Liao people. Zhao Mu answered truthfully. To be honest with my seniors, my fiefdom is located on the border. Although there were no major wars between the Song dynasty and the Liao dynasty after the Battle of Chanyuan, the Liao people's small teams often crossed the border to plunder and harass. Many of the people under my rule were taken away by him. I have submitted several petitions to the officials, but my subordinates have been subtle and have been like rocks sinking into the sea for many years. Wu Yazi caught Zhao Mu's weakness and immediately said, It's better to beg for oneself than to beg for others. As long as you worship me as your teacher, I will pass on your superior martial arts skills. Then you can drive away those bandits and protect your home by yourself. Why pretend to be someone else's hand? 
After listening, Zhao Mu's eyes lit up. Seeing Zhao Mu's reaction, Wu Yazi continued to ask, How is it? Do you want to learn this martial arts? Zhao Mu, on the other hand, stood up with a bright gaze and said, I want to learn. I want to learn. Seeing Zhao Mu's appearance, Wu Yazi curved his eyebrows and smiled, Then why don't you quickly come forward and kowtow? As long as you kowtow to me and become my teacher, then help me kill someone after completing your studies. Zhao Mu couldn't be sure if Wu Yazi was still deceiving him. He deliberately asked, There is a virtue in heaven, why do seniors let juniors kill as soon as they meet? Moreover, I don't know the details and conduct of this person. If practicing martial arts is to indiscriminately kill innocent people, then I would rather not learn it. At this point, Zhao Mu also asked the most crucial question. Since the seniors' martial arts are so strong, why not kill them yourself? People who cannot be killed by the senior, how can the junior, a beginner, be killed? At this moment, Wu Yazi sneered and said, All right. All right. All right. This way, I can rest assured. Upon hearing Wu Yazi's words, Zhao Mu felt a little scared, not realizing that Wu Yazi was really deceiving himself. He vaguely remembers that it was mentioned in the original work or TV series that Wu Yazi was afraid of admitting a too shrewd person and would raise tigers as a threat, repeating the mistakes of Ding Chunxiu. However, Zhao Mu was fortunate to have passed the final test of Wu Yazi. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Inquiring two major questions in the book in front of the principal you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Inquiring two major questions in the book in front of the principal Wu Yazi then said with a hint of helplessness, Don't worry, I won't let you kill a good person. I only let you kill one villain. Evil people. Zhao Muran murmured. Wu Yazi said calmly, Not bad. I have been waiting here for thirty years and have set up the Zhenlong chess game to find a wise and brave person to inherit my legacy. Then, I will remove my second disciple, the great villain Ding Chuanxiu, from my place. Then Wu Yazi briefly talked about the origin of the Xiaoyao sect, as well as the fact that Ding Chuanxiu was discovered by him when he was practicing evil skills, and later attacked him, knocking him down in the deep valley. Su Xingha pretended to be deaf and saved him, and so on. Wu Yazi said, Although I have all my skills now, my bones and meridians are completely broken and I cannot kill that rebellious disciple. All right. Since I want to learn martial arts, why don't I bow down and pay my respects? At this moment, Zhao Mu descended from the donkey and walked up to him, respectfully kowtowing his head nine times to Wu Yazi. Although Zhao Mu really wants to talk about the black jade intermittent cream, the distance between the heavenly reliance era and the present is too far, and perhaps it has not been developed yet. So the words reached my lips and I swallowed them back. Seeing his respect, Wiyazi nodded and said, Not bad. Now that you have entered my sect, you will be my disciple who closes the door in the future. I can't remember the name of my teacher for too long, but my Taoist name is Wuya. If someone asks me about it in the future, all you need to do is say that you are the disciple of the Xiaoyao sex Wuyazi. Zhao Mu knelt on the ground and said, Now Master can answer the disciple's question just now. Wu Yazi smiled and said, He he. You're a kid. You worship my sect and don't ask anything else, but you're obsessed with this kind of question. Anyway, since you want to know, I'll let you know. But that's a bit long. As a teacher, I demand handsome young talents, but only for the sake of my disciples' lives. Now that I am in my twilight years, I can only breathe a sigh of relief with seventy years of profound skills, otherwise I would have passed away long ago. Of course, I don't have much energy to guide your sex profound martial arts. And your master brother Su Xingha has only learned the miscellaneous skills of being a teacher, and he has not learned his own martial arts, so he naturally cannot guide you anything. Therefore, you need to go to the Wuyang Mountain in Dali to find your master uncle to learn martial arts. Zhao Mu asked, since my senior uncle can teach me martial arts, I believe her martial arts are definitely not bad. Wu Yazi nodded and said, not bad. 
now you still have a senior uncle and another senior uncle alive. Both of them have martial arts skills that are not inferior to being teachers. Zhao Mu continued to ask, how does her two martial arts compare to Ding Chuanxiu? Upon hearing these words, Wuyazi sneered and said disdainfully, that Ding Chuanxiu is just a clown who accidentally attacked. His martial arts have not been passed down by my Xiaoyao sect, but he has only learned some superficial skills and some unconventional techniques. In front of your senior uncle and senior uncle, he is not just a decaying grass and fluorescent, how can he compete with the sun and moon for glory? Zhao Mu said, if that's the case, then the master should ask the disciple or senior brother to invite the senior uncle and senior uncle. Why don't they just go and kill Ding Chunxiu directly? Why do you have to pass on the disciple's martial arts and let the disciple go? Also, if you have been here for decades and have passed on your profound martial arts to the senior brother, can you also seek revenge? Why do you have to go, disciple? For this question, Zhao Mu was also puzzled while reading, after all, both Li Qiushui and Tian Shan Tong Lao liked Wu Yazi, although Li Qiushui moved on and married the Lord of Western Xiao. Wu Yazi can still go and seek help from Tian Shan Tong Lao. With the eight wildernesses and six harmonies of Tian Shan Tong Lao's unique skill, killing Ding Chuanxiu is just a matter of the blink of an eye. Moreover, the Lingjiu Palace now governs nine heavenly in nine tribes, 30.6 caves, and 70.2 islands, making it the largest sect in the martial arts world. It is also easy to defeat a small Xingxiu sect. Why didn't Wuyazi invite Tian Shan Tong Lao to take action? Therefore, he also finds it difficult to understand. Upon hearing Zhao Mu's words, Wu Yazi sighed helplessly. Subsequently, Wu Yazi continued, Although Xing He is the first disciple of the teacher and your senior brother, he is not fond of fighting and can only learn miscellaneous skills such as music, chess, calligraphy, painting, medicine, divination, and astrology. His martial arts talent is not strong. And he wasted half of his life guarding the Zhenlong chess game as a teacher for decades. I feel ashamed of him in my heart. Moreover, he is already over the age limit and should spend his later years peacefully. I don't want him to work hard anymore. And your senior uncles and uncles, who were once defeated by them, feel ashamed to face them. Therefore, they cannot directly ask them to help me seek revenge. Moreover, your senior uncle has a violent and capricious temperament, is unpredictable and domineering, and cannot hear any voices different from yourself. As a teacher, I cannot tolerate your senior uncle's temper, let alone you. So you can only go find your senior uncle to learn martial arts. Although your senior uncle may not be as capricious as your senior uncle, she has a water-like charm and loves handsome young people. If a man with an ugly appearance, not to mention learning from her, as long as he gets closer to her, he will lose his hand. But you don't have to worry, your appearance should barely catch her eye. Moreover, I have some affection with your senior uncle. Speaking of this, Wu Yazi couldn't help but let out a deep sigh. Take this and go to the Longhuan blessed land at the foot of the Wuyang mountain in Dali to find her, saying, Wu Yazi begs you. I believe she will remember passing on your martial arts skills in the past. As Wu Yazi spoke, he took a ring from his own hand and handed it to Zhao Mu. Zhao Mu took the ring and carefully examined it. It was the leader's token of the Xiaoyao sect, the Seven Treasures Ring. Zhao Mu put the Seven Treasures Ring on his hand while playing and admiring it. Wu Yazi exerted the Northern Underworld divine skill and sucked Zhao Mu up. Then Zhao Mu flipped over, his body hanging upside down to connect with Wu Yazi's heavenly spirit cap. Zhao Mu pretended to ask, Master, what are you doing? Wu Yazi didn't answer Zhao Mu's question, but smiled and said, Hee hee, it's not bad. You really haven't learned any decent martial arts, and you have no internal strength at all. This way, it saves me a lot of effort to use up your martial arts. After speaking, Wuyazi immediately began to pass on the merit. Zhao Mu carefully felt the continuous influx of internal energy from Wuyazi into his body for 70 years. This feeling was like inflation, 
and at first he felt a bit congested, as if his body was about to explode. But as Wu Yazi passed on his power, he opened up his unique meridians and eight meridians, and the feeling of congestion disappeared without a trace. Instead, he felt as if a hundred rivers had returned to the sea. And with the constant influx of power into his body, Zhao Mu felt his body light and smooth. The feeling of being reborn should be like this. After a moment of passing on the merit, Zhao Mu felt that the power of Wu Yazi gradually weakened, but he still used his last bit of strength to gently release Zhao Mu. At this moment, Wu Yazi was no longer talented and had wrinkles all over his cheeks. All the strands of green silk before have turned into grayish white. Wu Yazi knew he didn't have much time left, so he didn't talk much nonsense. So he directly took out the portrait and map and said, My disciple, here is a picture of the place where I was practicing in Dali and where I kept my martial arts classics. Your martial uncle lives there, so please ask her to guide you in your martial arts. The woman in this picture is. Speaking of this, Wu Yazi seemed to find it difficult, but after a pause, he continued, The woman in this painting is your martial uncle, and there is also her. At this point, Wu Yazi was a bit out of breath, as if it was time for the lamp to run out of oil. Please help me say, I'm sorry, to her. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Journey to Dali You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 5 Journey to Dali Zhao Mu took the portrait and map and was about to say something. Wu Yazi breathed a sigh of relief and said, Good disciple, go call your senior brother in. I have something to tell him. Zhao Mu didn't hesitate, but nodded and went straight out of the cave. He knew that Wu Yazi was nearing the end of his life, and he did not explain it as before. Instead, he called out to Su Xinghe, who must have some dying wish. Zhao Mu naturally dared not delay any longer. Moreover, he himself came with the power of Wu Yazi and knew that his master would die after passing on the power. If he were to kneel in front of his master and see him off on his final journey, it would inevitably be a bit hypocritical. Instead of pretending to care about my master, it's better to quickly fulfill my master's last wish. After Zhao Mu left the cave, Su Xinghe had already waited there. Su Xinghe saw Zhao Mu's aura and the seven treasure ring on his finger, and roughly guessed it. Although I couldn't bear it in my heart, I just sighed. After all, he is also in his early years and has long been indifferent to things like life and death. Zhao Mu said to Su Xinghe, Senior brother, Master has something to explain to you. Su Xinghe nodded silently, didn't say much, and quickly entered the cave. Upon seeing the trigger in Zhao Mu's hand, Shi Qinglu, who was waiting outside, immediately knelt down and said, Disciple Shi Qinglu, see Master Master Master. Zhao Mu was startled by her sudden action, and then said, Madam Shir, there's no need to be too polite. Madam is much older than me. Although I am under the master's tutelage, in the future, if this kind of big gift can be waived, it will be waived. Shi Qinglu knelt on the ground, bowed her head and arched her hand, and replied, Report to the sect leader, senior uncle. Respect and hierarchy are orderly, and etiquette cannot be abolished. Zhao Mu looked at the trigger in his hand and then leaned against Shi Qinglu, saying, Then I will command you as the leader of the Xiaoyao sect. Shi Qinglu saw that Zhao Mu had used the privileges of the sect leader, so she immediately stood up and said, Yes. I will strictly follow the instructions of the sect leader. Subsequently, Shi Qinglu changed her previous attitude and began preparing tea and snacks to entertain Zhao Mu. And Zhao Mu sat at the nearby stone table, silently waiting for Su Xinghe to come out of it. After a moment, Su Xinghe walked out of the cave. His face is strange now, with a hint of sadness on the left side and a hint of joy on the right side. Being unable to laugh or cry may be what Su Xinghe is like now. Zhao Mu looked at Su Xinghe in front of him and stood up, asking, Senior brother, master is an old man. Su Xinghe put his hands behind his back and sighed slowly, saying, Master, his old man has already passed away. This at this moment, Su Xinghe advised, Junior brother, don't be sad. 
Master is almost a hundred years old and his dying wish has been fulfilled. He died with a smile on his face. Life, aging, illness, and death are human days. Since it is natural, why bother to grieve? Speaking, Su Xinghe shrugged and gestured for Zhao Mu to sit down. This pair of forgetful senior brothers sat face to face. Su Xinghe personally poured tea for Zhao Mu and then said, I don't know what junior brother's plan is next. Is he going back to Yenyun first? Zhao Mu shook his head and said, No. Although my mother is in the hall, she is still young and there are servants at home to serve her. With abundant family resources, there is no need for me to worry. Before my master passed away, he instructed me to go to the Wuyang Mountain in Dali to find my master to practice martial arts. Although we only met for a moment, we have always been a master disciple. This is my master's dying wish, and I plan to go to the Wuyang Mountain to fulfill it first. After listening, Su Xinghe nodded silently. Su Xinghe said, since junior brother has made a decision, let's go ahead and do it. Junior brother has inherited the skills of master for 70 years and also possesses some external martial arts. Even if he punches casually, he has the power to crack mountains and rocks. There is no need to worry about safety. Zhao Mu asked, what about you, senior brother? Now that master has passed away, I don't know what senior brother's plans are at the moment. Su Xinghe looked at his master's burial ground and lightly stroked his beard, saying, I'm getting old now, and I don't want to meddle in the world anymore. Now that my master has passed away, I won't go out of the deaf and mute valley for the rest of my life. I'll be filial to my master and guard his tomb. You'll have to worry about everything outside the valley, junior brother. Zhao Mu stood up at this moment and arched his hand at his senior brother, saying, Senior brother, don't worry. Since master entrusted me with this, I will definitely fulfill master's last wish. After I finish my studies, I will kill the traitor to avenge master. After listening, Su Xinghe smiled and nodded. Later, Su Xinghe looked at Shi Qinglu, who was carrying tea, and ordered, Qinglu, now your junior uncle has become the leader of my Xiaoyao sect. You wait for the eight people to walk in the Jianghu, and take good care of him in the future. Shi Qinglu nodded and answered yes. Su Xinghe said to Zhao Mu, junior brother, there are eight disciples under my brother's sect, collectively known as the Eight Friends of the Han Valley. Qinglu is one of them, and they are also somewhat famous in the martial arts world. If there are any difficulties in the future, you can go back to the Deaf Mute Valley to find my brother, or you can go find them. Zhao Mu also nodded silently. Although his master had recently passed away and he was required to observe filial piety for three years as an apprentice, Zhao Mu had other things to do, only symbolically observing for three days. Subsequently, Zhao Mu bid farewell to Su Xinghe and embarked on the journey to Dali. However, before leaving, Zhao Mu also gave Shi Qinglu a task, which was to act as a messenger for herself and send a peace letter to her mother in her hometown. This time I went on a long trip, my mother strongly opposed it and left a book without saying goodbye. Now that I have achieved success, I naturally want to report peace to my family. Let the mother feel at ease. Zhao Mu traveled south all the way after leaving the deaf and mute valley in the sky. He also changed his outfit along the way. No longer dressed up in a bookish manner like before. But it was a cloth robe and a bamboo hat and I spent a few tails of silver to buy an iron sword. Just like the image of a graceful, young hero, in my mind. The mountain is high and the road is far, and I have encountered many troubles along the way. However, nowadays Zhao Mu, with his sword-wielding skills, relies on a set of Tai Chi swords, a set of Tai Chi boxing that he learned from the park master, and a foundation of guiding the spirit of five animal play to guide Wu Yazi's internal strength for 70 years. The power of this Wudong martial arts technique, although it cannot be said to be comparable to that of the Tu Zhang in later generations, should also far surpass that of the seven heroes of Wudong. Those young people in the martial arts world were beaten up by him with three moves and two moves, and fled with their heads in their arms. 
Zhao Mu also felt for the first time that his internal strength was full, and how powerful his moves were. After more than a month, Zhao Mu finally arrived within the territory of Dali. But there are 100,000 mountains in Yunnan, and the map given to him by Wiyazi was drawn by him decades ago. Not to mention that the corrosion in that damp and dark cave is not very clear, and after decades of changes, many roads have also undergone significant changes. In this era, there is no electronic navigation, he doesn't have a compass, and the map is unreliable. All his actions rely on asking questions through his mouth. After arriving in Dali, Zhao Mu wandered around for more than half a month but never reached Mount Wuyang. Even though some kind hearted villagers informed him of the correct direction, there were too many forks in the road, and Zhao Mu still lost his way. That night, Zhao Mu was still circling on the path in the mountains and forests. Looking at the map in his hand, he didn't know where he was now. You can only walk when you see a crowded road. Fortunately, with the bright moon in the sky and the beautiful scenery of Yunnan under the moonlight, his mood was not so bad. Zhao Mu carried an iron sword on his back, holding a dog tail grass that had been folded from the roadside in his mouth, and looked at the map in his hand under the bright moonlight. Zhao Mu put away the map and muttered helplessly to himself, this place is deserted and uninhabited. It seems like we're going to sleep on the big trees again tonight. But just as he was feeling down, he saw a Taoist temple deep in the forest. Zhao Mu's face lit up with joy upon seeing this. He quickly quickened his pace and stepped forward. Firstly, he could stay overnight, and secondly, he could inquire with the locals about his current location and the location of Wuyang Mountain. Zhao Mu took three steps in two and quickly arrived at the Taoist temple. He looked at the words on the plaque under the moonlight and murmured, Yushu Temple. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Under the Bodhi Tree, Hua Zi is Sloppy. Do you have any thoughts on this story you are listening at novelfull.audio? Are you interested in the story of Chapter 6, Under the Bodhi Tree, Hua Zi is Clumsy? Zhao Mu looked at the plaque of Yushu Temple in front of him, feeling somewhat familiar, but he couldn't remember where he had heard it. However, as it's getting late, it's better to stay overnight as soon as possible. Although Zhao Mu felt that staying up late at night, disturbing others' rest, seemed a bit impolite. But currently staying overnight and exploring the route are much more important than saving face. So Zhao Mu quickly walked forward, knocked on the door, and then shouted, May I ask if anyone is there? I am a lost traveler in the mountains, lost on my way. It is already late at night now, could you please make it convenient for me to stay overnight? Thank you very much. As he spoke, Zhao Mu took out ten tails of silver from his waist and weighed them in his hand. He planned to give them as a reward when the owner opened the door. But at this moment, a woman's voice came from inside the door. In the middle of the night, Guangzhou is a place of pure cultivation for the poor, so it's inconvenient to accommodate outsiders. Please hurry up and leave. Upon hearing the voice of a woman coming from the temple, Zhao Mu wanted to turn around and leave. Before leaving, the corner of his eye glanced at the three words, Yushu Temple, again. Then a spiritual light exploded in his mind. Wait. In the territory of Dali, at the Yushu Temple, the Taoist in the temple is a woman. Is this the residence of Dao by Fong? Zhao Mu couldn't help but smile at this, his face full of cunning and evil. If it were someone else's way of life, Zhao Mu would refuse and leave without hesitation. But when I think of it, it's the Taoist temple of Dao by Fong. He not only needs to sleep in the Taoist temple today, but also in the arms of Dao by Fong. Zhao Mu was originally a promiscuous and lascivious person, but when he was at home, his mother kept a strict eye on him. Her mother was afraid that he, like his brothers, would waste his body at a young age by indulging in women. Therefore, it is stipulated that if Zhao Mu wants to be a woman, he must wait until he grows up. Out of filial piety towards his mother, even though he had two close maids, he never touched them at all. After going out, Although Zhao Mu reached the age limit set by his mother, 
he didn't carry much money with him and didn't have any spare money to seek pleasure. Although he now possesses martial arts skills and can easily kidnap a beautiful commoner girl, he is by no means a villain like a crane in the clouds. But now he actually wants to be a villain. Not for anything else, just because the person in front of me is Dao Bai Feng, the wife of Duan Jingchen. Among the entire Tianlong, what Zhao Mu dislikes the most is not the ambitious Morong Bo, nor the irresponsible Xiao Yuan Shan. But rather Duan Jingchen, who has become promiscuous and yet fails to fulfill his responsibilities. In Zhao Mu's eyes, Duan Jingchen is no different from Yun Zhanghe as a lecherous thief. However, the technique of using a crane in the clouds is strong, while Duan Jingchun's higher rank is deceitful. Duan Jingchen has a promiscuous nature, and whether she is a young girl or a married young woman, any slight appearance is irresistible. In the Battle of Shaoshe Mountain, he mistook Yi Ernyang for his old lover. It is evident that this person has left behind so many scandalous debts that he cannot even remember them clearly. As an imperial nobleman, Duan Jingchun's promiscuity is not a big deal. But he is lecherous and not fulfilling his responsibilities. After a night of debauchery, he slapped his butt and left. Completely disregarding the tragedy of losing one's old lover and getting pregnant before marriage. This is very excessive. If you really take responsibility for all the women you have fingered, you can still be considered a man. But unfortunately, most of him started in chaos and gave up. When we meet again, let's say a few sweet and grandiose words. I only hate those women who remember to eat or not to beat, and really have been influenced by him again. Qin Hongmian raised Mu Wanqing alone. Wan Xingzhu abandoned his two infant daughters for the sake of his reputation. Li Qing Luo, Kang Min, and Gan Bao Bao are relatively lucky. With their outstanding appearance, they have found their successor. This is still on stage, those women who did not appear don't know what their fate will be. After arriving in this world, Zhao Mu also became aware of how unfriendly the Song dynasty, which had the most prosperous feudal ethics, was towards women. Perhaps some will be soaked in pig cages by their families and tragically die. They lost their own lives, but the men who sacrificed their lives for them have long forgotten about them and are now enjoying themselves with other women. I can't even remember who they are. Even if he hasn't followed him, he would mistakenly think he has. Moreover, nowadays Dali and Song are separate countries from each other. In Zhao Mu's eyes, there is no difference between Duan Jingchen and those modern foreign trash who go to other countries to pursue beauty, then pat their buttocks and return to China, leaving behind a lot of hybrid varieties and wasting social resources in other countries. Green people are always green, so Zhao Mu also wants to give Duan Jingchen a green hat. Duan Jingchen's other women, Zhao Mu, are not particularly interested at the moment. After meeting, you can check your mood. Because they are not recognized by Duan Jingchen, even if they are interested in the future, they will only be interested based on their appearance and appearance. And Duan Jingchen didn't even give them the position of a concubine. Stealing such a woman has no killing effect on Duan Jingchen. Moreover, Duan Jingchen allowed them to marry and steal whenever they wanted to play. If you don't want to play, just throw it back to their catcher husband. It is evident that in Duan Jingchun's eyes, they are just insignificant playthings. As a prince, compared to Duan Jingchun, Zhao Mu feels that his father is much more diligent and responsible. Although his father, the prince of Dongping County, is also a lecherous person with many wives, concubines, and children, he is very responsible. On the day when the prince of Dongping was alive, although he and his mother did not receive any special status, at least they had no worries about food and clothing and enjoyed the protection of the royal family. And before his death, he made it clear that their mother and son's affairs were going on, and only after confirming that their youngest son and Eiji could live well, did he swallow his anger. On the other hand, Duan Jingchen is sweet talk to every woman, but he dare not even crown a concubine, which shows that the princess Dao Baifeng still has enough weight in his heart. Even if it's just for the sake of marriage. Moreover, 
This Dao Bai Fong is not a good woman. She disregards her integrity and can even give to beggars on the street. Since Duan Yanqing's disgusting disability is something he needs, even more so after becoming the emperor of the Song dynasty. And Dao Bai Fong is also a famous beauty in the book. Before encountering other women, it's also good to use her as an appetizer. After making up his mind, Zhao Mu turned around and returned to the front door. He loudly said, the place where the Taoist priest resides is called Yushu Temple. I wonder if the Taoist priest's honorific name is Yushu Sanren. Sitting upright inside the room, the sword white phoenix heard the words, and her fair and handsome face furrowed its brows. Dao Baifeng thought to herself, who is this person? I have been practicing alone here for many years and have never seen outsiders. I also have no friends. This person has an accent of being from the Central Plains. Only the prince's guards know where I live. I don't think they will talk to outsiders. Dao Baifeng sat inside the room and answered loudly, so what? Zhao Mu smiled outside and said, it's good, it's good. Since I'm a scattered person from Yushu, please invite Yushu to open the door for me. Du Fu also wrote a poem saying, The flower path has never been swept by a guest, and the Peng Men has only been opened for you now. Ha ha ha. Although Dao Baifeng did not understand the meaning of Zhao Mu's recitation of this poem, she still impatiently said, Get out of here. Otherwise, I will make you regret it. Zhao Mu smiled and shook his head outside the door, saying, I'm afraid I'll leave. Taoist, you'll regret it. I learned a strange story from a notebook. I wonder if Yushu Sanren is interested in listening to it. Upon hearing this, Dao Baifeng became even more impatient. She replied, You're so noisy. I'm not interested. You'd better leave quickly before I take action. Zhao Mu remained calm and composed, but his next words made Dao Baifeng feel like a bolt from the blue. Zhao Mu chuckled and said, Outside the Tianlong Temple, under the Bodhi tree, the Huazi is messy and the Guanin has long hair. I don't know if the scattered people of Yushu are interested in this story. If the scattered people of Yushu are not interested in this story, then I won't disturb them much. So I will spread this story to the city of Dali and tell the people of Quan Dali to listen to it. I think those people who have risen to power will be quite interested in such strange stories after tea and dinner. At this moment, the door of Yushu Temple opened with a loud bang. Immediately, a Taoist nun wearing a white Taoist robe and holding a brush of dust shot out of the door. She swung the dust and fiercely attacked Zhao Mu. End of this chapter Chapter 7 You don't want your secret to be exposed you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 You don't want your secret to be upon seeing this, Zhao Mu immediately bent down and pulled out the long sword behind him with a negative sword posture. Immediately, Zhao Mu used the Tai Chi sword technique move, and with a twist of the blade, Bai Feng's hand was wrapped in dust by him on the long sword. Zhao Mu now possesses the pure internal power of the Xiaoyao sect, which has been without a cliff for 70 years. Although his martial arts are mediocre, his internal power is outstanding. Immediately, Zhao Mu gave a gentle shake, and his strength was far beyond that of a woman like Dao Baifeng. Zhao Muli was strong, and in an instant, Dao Baifeng brushed off the dust in his hand. Zhao Mu's sword edge turned and the silver threads of the sword's white phoenix brushed against the dust, and he knocked it to the side. Dao Baifeng held her numbed arm in her left hand and looked up and down at the young man in front of her, who was about the same age as her son. She couldn't believe that such a young man could easily knock down her dust. And the martial arts used by this young man were also unprecedented to her. And Zhao Mu, with the bright moonlight, carefully scrutinized the beautiful woman in front of him, Dao Baifeng. Dao Baifeng has fair and tender skin, and a beautiful appearance. Although she has grown older, she still retains her charm. Even this lingering charm is a unique charm that those girls do not possess. Wearing a Taoist crown and a white Taoist robe, she stands out in the desolate moonlight. 
no wonder it made Duan Yanqing misunderstand. Zhao Mu put away his long sword and then said, You are indeed a beauty. No wonder that old ghost would write you in a secret letter. However, your martial arts skills are really good, and no wonder that old ghost has a lustful heart and no courage towards you. If he really comes to steal jade and fragrance, he probably won't be your opponent. Zhao Mu's words were just to excuse Dao Baifeng. He didn't want to kill Dao Baifeng, he just wanted to kiss Fangzi. Otherwise, when Dao Baifeng asked about it in the future, how did he know about it? He couldn't say that he was a traveler, it was written in a book. Dao Baifeng glared angrily at Zhao Mu and continued to evade, Who the hell are you? What are you talking nonsense about? Zhao Mu spread out his hand and smiled at the words, Is that nonsense? If you want to be ignorant, you must do nothing yourself. Back then, outside Tianlong Temple, there were not only you, Taoist, but also that dirty beggar all over. Upon hearing this, Dao Baifeng couldn't help but tremble all over. There was also a bystander around who saw all of this in his eyes. This person was a flower picker from the central plains, and after watching this priceless show from the side, he followed behind this beautiful woman, wanting to see who this beautiful woman was, who the divine saint could do such a shocking and shocking thing. He didn't expect that this beauty was actually the queen of the Jinan prince in Dali. He was originally a lecherous person and wrote in his letter, I intended to use this secret to offer the beauty some wealthy and noble job, to kiss her. But I found that this beauty's martial arts were superior to mine. Although she was pregnant, the Jinan prince's mansion was full of experts, and she was constantly guarded by the imperial guards of Dali. I was afraid that a strong attack might lead to stealing chickens, but she died. Afterwards, he didn't give up. Instead, he hid and waited for the opportunity. Oh. By the way. He even specially wrote about the scene of the Dali Duan family celebrating the birth of this queen's son, and the whole city of Dali celebrating together. Later, he found out that this beautiful woman did not always live in the palace, but moved to a place called Yushu Temple and changed her route to Yushu Sanren. However, considering her lack of strength and not being her opponent, he didn't want to waste time here, so he returned to Zhongyu and Qinxiu. Unfortunately, that old pervert was killed by me when he committed the crime earlier. I found several tales of silver on his body, as well as a letter left by him after stealing incense and jade. I burned that thing after reading it. However, the shocking story of the princess of Xinan, which left a deep impression on me, cannot be forgotten for a long time. After hearing this, Dao Baifeng couldn't help but tremble in her heart. Previously, she chose a beggar who was dirty, smelly, and covered in injuries. Firstly, out of revenge against Duan Jingchun, she belittled herself. Secondly, she thought that such a beggar with disabilities and injuries should not live long. This matter becomes an eternal secret. She didn't expect someone else to be present for what she did that night. It was also included in a book, and in the end, it was taken away by the young man in front of him. Faced with this ironclad evidence, Dao Baifeng was also disheartened and unable to distinguish. He looked at Zhao Mu tentatively and asked, What do you want? Zhao Mu replied, It's nothing. I just wanted to stay overnight before. But this matter has already been made clear to the beauty, so I don't just want to stay overnight. Looking at Zhao Mu's frivolous gaze, Dao Baifeng had already understood her intention. However, this secret is related to one's own innocence and also to whether one's son can inherit the throne. This matter must become an eternal secret. Even if it means paying any price. At this moment, Dao Baifeng smiled sweetly and slowly walked up to Zhao Mu. She said, okay. Since the young master doesn't mind my aging and declining complexion, then. As he approached, the smile on Dao Baifeng's face turned into anger in an instant. Dao Baifeng concentrated her internal strength in the palm of her hand. Taking advantage of Zhao Mu's lack of inspection, she slapped him in the front chest. So I'll see you in the next life. With that, Dao Baifeng's palm had already hit Zhao Mu's heart. 
But Zhao Mu still didn't dodge or dodge, but directly took it down. But when the palm fell, it was not Zhao Mu who fell down, but Dao Baifeng who was shaken and flew out. Dao Baifeng was shocked by the biming true qi transmitted to Zhao Mu by Wu Yazi, and he lay helpless on the ground. Her organs were slightly trembling. Fortunately, Dao Baifeng's martial arts are only second-rate in the martial arts world, and his ability to counter-attack is not very strong. Otherwise, it is likely to be seriously injured. Dao Baifeng lay on her side on the ground, looking at the young man in front of her incredulously and said, Who the hell are you? Zhao Mu walked forward and crouched down to pinch Dao Baifeng's chin, saying, My name is Zhao Mu, and I will be your lover from now on. Zhao Mu kept caressing Dao Baifeng's fair and tender face with the back of his hand. Yushu Sanren has been practicing here for many years, so she must be lonely in her boudoir. I came here to relieve the loneliness of Wang Fei's boudoir. At this moment, Dao Baifeng spat out saliva on Zhao Mu's face, and she said fiercely, Bah! Shameless little pervert, I would rather die than be insulted by you. Speaking of the sword, Bai Feng was about to bite his tongue and commit suicide. Zhao Mu saw something unusual in her eyes, and then he quickly grabbed Dao Baifeng's jaw and said, Hee hee, isn't it too late for the Empress Dowager to pretend to be a chaste and martyr now? I'm afraid even the prostitutes in the brothel won't be able to take on such dirty guests. You can give me such a disgusting beggar, I'm better than that beggar. You. Dao Baifeng struggled to squeeze out a voice of anger with her throat, tears swirling in her eyes, but she couldn't refute the fact that Zhao Mu had said. Zhao Mu continued to mock, you can die. But after you die, I will spread your secret to the city of Dali. Although your son is a nobleman in heaven, with your mother, who has a stigma on her body, I'm afraid he will miss his throne. Upon hearing about his son, Dao Baifeng suddenly panicked. She has been living a very miserable life, speaking from the bottom of her heart. Her father gave her to the Dali royal family for the sake of his own power. My husband loves to seek flowers and willows, and except for a few sweet words to avoid him, he spends the rest of his time in the arms of other women. All she has now is her own son. Perhaps from a certain perspective, only Duanyu, the son, truly belongs to her. Zhao Mu softened when he saw Dao Baifeng's attitude. He grabbed her wrist with one hand and continued, holding on to her slender waist with the other. Life is great, why should Madam seek death? Besides, I learned from that letter that the Prince of Jinnan spends his days searching for flowers and willows, being a lowly and virtuous young woman, an ignorant young girl. When did he consider your feelings? I don't want much, I just want to have a night's sleep with Madam. If Madam follows me, this secret is known by heaven and earth, and I know it with Madam. Requesting comments, requesting recommended votes, end of this chapter. Chapter 8 Breaking the jar and leaving no trace you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 8 Breaking the jar and leaving no trace Dao Baifeng frowned and slowly lowered her head in response to Zhao Mu's words. However, a ripple couldn't help but rise in her heart. Seeing that Dao Baifeng no longer resisted, Zhao Mu naturally became impolite. He picked up the brush of Dao Baifeng and held it at his waist. Then he bent down and directly picked up Dao Baifeng. Even though she picked up Dao Baifeng, she still had no reaction. Zhao Mu saw this and kissed her smooth cheek. At this moment, the absent dot minded Dao Baifeng had a slight reaction. He wiped his saliva with disdain and then glared at Zhao Mu with a resentful expression. But there was not much hostility in this look. Zhao Mu didn't care either, so he walked straight into her room with Dao Baifeng. Zhao Mu experienced the joy of Duan Yanqing and Duan Jingchun that night. But he also felt the loneliness of Dao Baifeng. At first, Although Dao Baifeng did not resist, he was still full of disgust towards Zhao Mu. But in the end, Dao Baifeng began to indulge herself. I don't know if she has been lonely for too long, or if she is still venting her dissatisfaction with Duan Jingchun over the years. 
Or perhaps she finally found a reason to persuade herself to indulge and make up for years of emptiness this time. This time the crime was on Zhao Mu, but not on her anymore. In short, compared to Zhao Mu, Dao Bai Feng is the most useful one. The moonlight shone through the gaps in the window and scattered on the cheeks of Dao Bai Feng. After a sleepless night, Dao Bai Feng collapsed in place, with sweat on her cheeks. At this moment, Dao Bai Feng struggled with her dry throat and said weakly, I have already given you what you want. You will abide by your agreement and completely forget about this matter. Zhao Mu reached out and hugged Dao Bai Feng, then chuckled and said, I'll eat your secret for a lifetime. You. Although Dao Bai Feng's face was angry, she didn't have much resentment. And she discovered some interesting things while Zhao Mu was not paying attention. But Zhao Mu no longer insulted her with words, but instead held her in his arms. He continued, although I will eat your secret for a lifetime, I will also protect you for a lifetime. Upon hearing this, Dao Bai Feng was somewhat surprised. Her father once said this to her, her husband once said it to her, and today Zhao Mu also said it. His father did not do it. Her father, for the sake of his power and marriage with the Dali royal family, gave her as a tool for marriage to a prodigal son. And her husband didn't do it either. Her husband only uses sweet words to deceive her and then turns to look for other women. She looked blankly at the man in front of her who could be her own son. But what she saw in Zhao Mu's eyes was a sincerity that the royal family found difficult to see. Zhao Mu stretched lazily and then pulled up a cotton quilt, directly covering Dao Baifeng's body. He kissed Dao Baifeng's forehead and then said, All right, that's all for today. You can take a rest. I came to Dali to do something, and I won't stay long after it's done. But I won't forget our relationship today. If you have any difficulties in the future, I will do my best to help you. After I entered the door, I saw that there was a wing room next to you, so I won't disturb you. After speaking, Zhao Mu put on his clothes and turned around to leave. Leaving a sword and a phoenix, lying on a large bed illuminated by the moonlight, I don't know what I'm thinking. She caressed her still warm forehead, and the expression on her face was uncertain whether to cry or laugh. Dao Bai Feng, this poor woman, besides being willing to fall, doesn't have any special prejudice. If Dao Bai Feng needs anything in the future, he will also do his best to help his first old lover. Zhao Mu will definitely be much more reliable than her unreliable husband. In the next few days, Zhao Mu will stay with Dao Bai Feng. Since Dao Bai Feng is still at Yushu Temple, it means that Duan Yu has not come yet. He knew that Li Qiushui had already left Longhuan Blessed Land, and it was meaningless for him to go there again. When he arrived there, he simply obtained the scroll of Biming Divine Arts left by Li Qiushui. However, the Blessed Land of Longhuan in Wuyang Mountain is treacherous. Although he now possesses superior martial arts skills, like Tian Ming, he lacks the internal power passed down by his elders, but lacks the ability to perform his martial arts. Duan Yu was able to break into the land of Longhuan by chance. For safety reasons, let Duan Yu go and retrieve the scroll of Biming Divine Arts for him. It would be better for him to wait here. Anyway, according to the story's setting, Duan Yu will eventually be chased by cranes in the clouds and come to Yushu Temple to seek help from Dao Bai Feng. Although he may lose the opportunity of being invincible from all kinds of poison, eating a disgusting toad alive is a bit difficult for Zhao Mu. He might as well keep this blessing for Duan Yu. Can it be considered as compensation for his and his mother's occasional spring breeze? After a few days of getting along, although the relationship between Zhao Mu and Dao Bai Feng was not very good, it also eased a lot. And although Zhao Mu doesn't have the hypocritical flattery of her husband, he is also very considerate of her. This is the tenderness that Dao Bai Feng has been missing for many years. I have been here for many years, and although there are always news of inviting her back to the mansion, my husband has never visited. Even if Duan Jingchun personally came to welcome her back once, she does not have to suffer loneliness in this mountain and wilderness. 
It seems that her husband has been mesmerized by other women and has forgotten about having such a legitimate queen like her. Husband searching for flowers and willows, carefree and joyful, almost forgetting oneself. If one becomes entangled, it will only be oneself who suffers. After several days of intimate contact, although Dao Baifeng had doubts about Zhao Mu's identity, she discovered one thing. Zhao Mu was definitely not a man from the martial arts world. Both his posture and speech and behavior can prove that he comes from a noble background. And she also discovered some interesting things. Dao Baifeng also raised Zhao Mu as an irresponsible, little white face. At least he is much stronger than that disgusting beggar. On this day, Zhao Mu and Dao Baifeng were both taking a nap in the room. The sudden and intense knocking on the door woke them up. Mom, open the door. Mom, open the door. Upon hearing this sound, both of them woke up in shock. Zhao Mu was pleasantly surprised in his heart. Although he arrived a bit late, it didn't take much time to arrive, and everything that was supposed to have come came. The secret script of Baiming Divine Arts that he had been longing for was delivered by Duan Yu. At present, the courier has arrived at the doorstep for delivery, and he should be ready to go and sign for it. But at this moment, Dao Baifeng's heart rose to her throat, unaware that her son had suddenly arrived. She is feeling very guilty now because she stole a man. She was very afraid that Duan Yu would see Zhao Mu. Seeing Dao Baifeng's panicked expression, Zhao Mu comforted him and said, It's okay. I'm just a lost person who came here to stay overnight. As a monk, Yushu Sanren kindly took me in. You just need to pretend that nothing happened and go open the door. But when I hear the voice of someone outside the door, it seems there's something urgent. End of this chapter Chapter 9 War Evil Thieves Show Their Sharpness You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Chapter 9 War Evil Thieves Show Their Sharpness Although Dao Baifeng was not in a well-organized state, all women were just as strong as mothers. When she heard her son's urgent call, she didn't care about anything else and simply tidied up her clothes. Then, she put on a Taoist robe, took a brush, and went to open the door for her son. And Zhao Mu also quickly stood up, erasing all the marks of the two living together. After organizing everything, he left the door. However, as soon as he left the door, Zhao Mu looked at himself and applied dust from the ground to his body, shoes, and clothes. Then I made my hair a bit messy. He even crushed a few leaves and placed them on his own head. After Zhao Mu saw that he was almost disguised, he decided to go out and take a closer look. Zhao Mu did all this for the sake of the reputation of Dao Baifeng. Since he promised her to keep a secret for her, their relationship can only be underground and not visible. So it's better to do the whole set for the show. At least now he does look like a dusty passerby on his way. When Zhao Mu was about to leave, he saw that Zhu Danchen had already made contact with Yun Zhanghe. And Mu Wanqing also finished the flying vinegar from Dao Baifeng. Zhao Mu stood behind the door, carefully scrutinizing the crowd present. Zhu Danchen, one of the four great guardians of Dali, is dressed like a middle-aged scholar, nothing particularly special. And the appearance of the crane in the clouds is quite lewd. Others are very thin, each very tall, like a thin bamboo pole. The person lost weight, but the way they laughed was quite lewd. But what attracted Zhao Mu's attention more were Duan Yu and Mu Wanqing. Duan Yu has a handsome appearance, a tall and upright posture, and a refined and easy going demeanor. Moreover, there is a hint of cynicism between the eyebrows of the young Duan Yu. It feels quite like a young man next door. Although Mu Wanqing is not very old, she is lively and charming. Although there was a fierce look in her eyes, she still had the childlike innocence of a little girl. Zhao Mu looked at it and felt very fond of it. Despite his love, Zhao Mu did not stare closely at Mu Wanqing. Because in Mu Wanqing's heart now, Duan Yu is her husband, and she is very wary of other men looking at her more. If you want to win this unruly, little chili, 
at least the first impression when you meet, you can't be too bad. Zhao Mu not only wanted swords and phoenixes, but also many beauties that Duan Yu had met. However, this is not aimed at Duan Yu. It's just the price he has to pay to help Dao Baifeng keep the secret. If Duan Yu's background is not made public, then Duan Yu is Duan Jingchuan's biological son. Wang Yuyan, Zhong Ling, Mu Wanqing, and others are his biological sisters. However, Zhao Mu didn't realize how pitiful Duan Yu was. Moreover, Duan Yu didn't need him to be pitiful either. Seeing Duan Yu's handsome appearance, he felt extremely ashamed. With the background of Prince Duan Yu and his handsome appearance, if Duan Yu wanted to win over women, it is estimated that the beautiful women who came to apply could rank from Dali City to Wuliang Mountain. The crane in the clouds carefully scrutinized the Dao robe Dao by Fong in front of him. Oh my, today the man has had his peach blossom luck. I didn't expect even the nun to be so beautiful. Let's take you with us today. And Zhu Danchen quickly protected the three of them upon seeing this. Zhu Danchen's remaining light saw Zhao Mu walking out of the Taoist temple. Although he was curious about his identity, the current enemy situation was not the time to dwell on these matters. Zhu Danchen stood guard in front of the three of them, holding a judge's pen in his hand. He shouted to Dao Baifeng behind him, Be careful of the scattered people of Yushu. This thief has excellent lightness skills. After speaking, Zhu Danchen pointed to the judge's pen and shouted, Bold thief! Hurry up and capture him! Upon hearing this, Yunzhong smiled and said, Hee hee, with your three-legged skills, you don't have the qualifications to become a flower protector. Zhao Mu, who arrived at the door, pretended and asked, What's wrong? Duan Yu and Mu Wanqing also noticed the sudden appearance of Zhao Mu at this moment. Duan Yu asked, Mother. Who is this? Dao Baifeng saw that Zhu Danchen was not a match for Yun Zhanghi, and she said to Zhao Mu, We will discuss this matter later. Since Zhao Gongzi is grateful for the kindness of the poor, can he lend a hand or two? Zhao Mu also recognized the meaning of Dao Baifeng. I didn't expect to fulfill my promise so soon. Zhao Muang looked at the extremely vicious Yunzhong in front of him and said to Dao Baifeng, I have just arrived at the treasure land. I am grateful for the support of Yushu Sanren. Since the Taoist has spoken, I can help you with my own strength. After speaking, Zhao Mu stood beside Zhu Danchen. Zhu Danchen turned around to look at the young man he had never seen before, and couldn't help but frown. But in the face of the enemy, although he has 10,000 words, it is still better to retreat first. Zhu Danchen guarded Yunzhong and said, Be careful, little brother, this thief. Zhao Muhuan smiled and said, Who should I be? I turned out to be the last of the four evil men, the world's top lecherous thief, the extremely vicious Yunzhong. Upon hearing this, Dao Baifeng couldn't help but sneer in her heart. Dao Baifeng thought to herself, how dare you say that someone else is a pervert. Upon hearing this, Zhu Danchen and Yun Zhanghe both looked at the young man in front of them with a surprised expression on their faces. At this moment, Dao Baifeng asked, oh. Does Prince Zhao know him? Zhao Mu turned his head to look at Dao Baifeng and said politely, this is natural. Yunzhong is one of the four major villains and still has a reputation in the Central Plains. There are many notices from the government that want to reward him, and the four major villains have defected to the Western Xia First Class Hall. Even if the scattered people of Yushu do not speak up, I will eliminate this thief. Upon hearing these words, the crane in the clouds couldn't help but furrow its brows, as the four great villains were notorious far and wide. Duan Yanqing and the South China Sea Crocodile God are cruel and easy to kill. Yi Ernyang poisoned and killed babies, while he raped countless women in the clouds. They are notorious and have indeed been wanted by the Song government. But joining the Western Xia First Class Hall has been a thing of the past two years, and few people in the martial arts world know about it. Yunzhong is curious about how the young people in front of him know about it. 
Yun Zhang he pointed his weapon blade iron claw steel staff at Zhao Mu and asked, Kid. Who the hell are you? Zhao Muan said with a smile, it doesn't matter who I am. What's important is that if you don't leave, you might be a dead person. Oh no. It's a dead beast. The sleazy smile of Yun Zhang gradually faded away, replaced by a fierce and sinister expression. He said, stinky kid. Today, Grandpa will send you to the west. After speaking, the crane in the clouds stood up and attacked like Zhao Mu. And Zhao Mu also calmly put on the posture of Tai Chi. When Yun Zhong approached, Zhao Mu used Tai Chi techniques to remove his weapon, and then a cloud hand pushed out. Yun Zhong was directly knocked out by Zhao Mu's domineering power. The crane in the cloud fell heavily onto the big tree behind him, and immediately sprayed blood from its mouth. Startled up the birds falling from the tree and shook off many fallen leaves. The eyes of the crane in the clouds were filled with fear and disbelief. What was frightening was that he felt the feeling of death for the first time. But what was unbelievable was that he couldn't believe the young man in front of him was so amazing. He felt that even his elder brother Duan Yanqing's internal strength was far inferior to the young man in front of him. And the fist technique he used just now, he had never seen it before, and his final palm, which seemed light and straightforward, had a tremendous power. The crane in the clouds dared not delay. He threw down his weapons, calmed down, and quickly ran away. Seeing the fleeing crane in the clouds, Zhao Mu looked at his hand and felt only regret in his heart. He still couldn't control his strength well and couldn't kill the bug. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Using Facts to Lie You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Using Facts to Lie Zhao Mu has always faced a problem of not being able to control his power well. It seems that his own martial arts skills have not yet fully belonged to him, and Zhao Mu can only unleash two dot thirds of them. Although Zhao Muxing was brave and righteous along the way, and killed many young martial artists in the martial arts world, those people were just mediocre and not considered experts in the martial arts world. Just an ordinary strong warrior. Not included in the reference list. Although he can also defeat Dao Baifeng and Yun Zhanghe, he is currently only able to defeat and injure them with a single force. If the crane in the clouds in front of me can escape with his superb lightness skills, there is still nothing I can do. Faced with these martial arts masters who have genuine qi to protect themselves, it's a bit regrettable that I can't kill them in one blow. I just don't know what to do when encountering truly top-notch experts like Xiao Feng, Zhou Maji, Xiao Yuan Shan, and Murong Bo in the future. On the side, Mu Wanqing saw Zhao Mu's palm strike back the crane in the clouds. With a surprised expression on her face, she also naively asked, You're so powerful. How did you let him escape? Why didn't you pursue him? Zhao Mu was pondering and had not yet regained his senses. He casually said, I don't know how to use lightness skills. Ah. You're so amazing, you can't even learn lightness skills. Mu Wanqing covered her mouth and still asked in surprise. At this moment, Zhao Mu realized that he had said the wrong thing. He then explained, it's like this. Everyone has their own strengths, let's take Yun Zhanghe as an example. This thief's martial arts are average, but his lightness skills can be considered the first person I have ever seen or heard of. I have decent martial arts skills, but my lightness skills are weak. How can I possibly catch up with him? Mu Wanqing also feels reasonable. She was previously protected by Yu Lao San and spent a few days with Yun Zhong. This villain's lightness skills are indeed rare in the world. Besides Mu Wanqing, Zhu Danchen was also surprised by the strength of the young people around him. If it weren't for the fact that Dao Baifeng had just introduced the person in front of him with the surname Zhao and the age difference, he would have really suspected that the person in front of him was one of Nan Murong and Bei Xiaofeng. But Zhu Danchen also suspected Zhao Mu's identity at this time. After all, Dao Baifeng has a special identity and lives alone here. Suddenly, a man appeared, and if this were to be spread, 
it would not be good for the reputation of Dao Baifong and the entire Dali royal family. If necessary, then this person cannot appear again. As the four experienced guards of the officialdom, although Zhu Danchen had malicious intentions, he remained silent. He smiled hypocritically and then bowed to Zhao Mu, saying, I have made great contributions to repelling this evil thief this time. I just don't know my name, background, and place of residence. I was also informed by my younger brother that my master can also make a small profit in the future and come to the door to thank me. Zhao Mu has two lifetimes of personal experience and naturally understands Zhu Danchen's meaning. At present, Duan Yu is also in front of him. He happened to reveal his identity and asked him to return the secret script of the Xiaoyao sect. At this moment, Zhao Mu replied calmly, I am Zhao Mu, a native of the state of the Song dynasty. I came to the kingdom of Dali to search for someone on the Wuyang mountain. As for my disciple, please forgive me, sir. Before I passed away, I did not want to disclose it to the public. Zhao Mu does not claim to be a disciple of the Xiaoyao sect, mainly because Duan Yu is nearby. When Li Qiushui left the scroll of Biming Divine Arts in the Longhuan Blessed Land, he once left a warning on it, after achieving success, kill all the disciples of the Xiaoyao sect. Although Duan Yu has a compassionate heart and will not really kill all the disciples of the Xiaoyao sect, he has not yet trusted himself. If he reveals the truth, he may be wary and will not return the secret script of the Biming Divine Arts to him. Zhu Danchen knew he was not a match for Zhao Mu, and since Zhao Mu was unwilling to reveal it, he dared not ask forcefully. Zhu Danchen changed his tone and then continued to ask, Oh! Since you're visiting friends at Wuyang Mountain, why are you here, little brother? After hearing Zhu Danchen's words, Zhao Mu seized the opportunity and said, This is a long story. I set off from the central plains and took the map left by my master to Wuyang Mountain. However, there are 100,000 mountains in Yunnan and Yunnan, and after walking for a few days, I lost my direction. After wandering around for a long time, I accidentally came here. After several days of water and rice in the mountains, I have been exhausted. If it weren't for Taoist Yushu's adoption, I might have died in a foreign land. After Zhao Mu finished speaking, he bowed deeply to Dao Baifeng. After listening to Zhao Mu's words, Zhu Danchen, in order to protect the reputation of the queen, lowered the face of the royal family in Dali. For the sake of safety, he still needs to verify it last. After all, Zhao Mufang only helped them, and Zhao Mu's martial arts are not bad, and his background is mysterious. If it's not necessary, the prince's mansion in Jinnan doesn't want to have a relationship with him. If possible, they can even make friends. After all, in the world of martial arts, it's not just about fighting and killing, sometimes it's about being more worldly wise. Zhu Danchen's eyes rolled and he immediately said, Oh! You lost your way in Dali. Coincidentally, I am a local resident of Dali. Can you please let me take a look at your map? I can also point you in the right direction so that you can find your old friend as soon as possible. Zhao Mu felt that this was an opportunity, and then he pretended to say, Oh! That's great! I originally wanted to ask Taoist Yushu for some guidance today. Since Mr. is from a local family, it would be even better. As Zhao Mu spoke, he returned to the Yushu temple. Zhu Danchen was afraid that he would take the opportunity to escape, so he followed in. The engagement between Dao Baifeng and Duan Yu was also disrupted by their actions. Dao Baifeng felt very guilty, so he led the two of them into the temple together. Seeing everyone coming behind him, Zhao Mu furrowed his brow and turned his back, slightly raising the corners of his mouth. He opened his luggage and took out a portrait of Li Qiushui, as well as a map left for him by Wu Yazi. This portrait itself depicts Li Qiushui, but Wu Yazi intentionally spots a mole on Li Qiushui's little sister. When he pretended to take the map, he accidentally bumped the scroll and knocked over Li Qiushui's portrait on the ground. The portrait landed on the ground, and the scroll slowly opened, revealing the beautiful figure under Wu Yazi's exquisite painting. 
Zhao Mu handed the map in his hand to Zhu Danchen upon seeing this, and quickly squatted down to put the portrait back away. Dao Baifeng and Mu Wanqing didn't have any special reaction, while Duan Yu couldn't help but widen his eyes when he saw the appearance of the person in the painting. After Zhao Mu rolled up the scroll again, he put the portrait back in place. He arrived in front of Zhu Danchen, opened the scroll with him, and said, This is the map that my master left for me before he passed away. Then Zhao Mu smiled bitterly and said, This map was drawn by my master decades ago. Now that time has changed, many routes have already changed. When I first arrived, I followed the map left by my master and turned here for a long time. If I hadn't turned here and received the help of Taoist Yushu, I'm afraid I would have really buried my bones here. After listening to Zhao Mu's words, Zhu Danchen carefully examined the map. He was usually better at being vulgar and had some knowledge of calligraphy and painting. After careful identification, he found that Zhao Mu was indeed not lying. Many of the routes on this map had been diverted or abolished, and from the condition of the paper on this map, he could confirm that it was at least 40 or 50 years old. Despite seeing evidence to clear the suspicion of Zhao Mu, Zhu Danchen still had final doubts in his heart. End of this chapter